It's about that time of day again here, boys and girls. Welcome back, welcome back. My name is Joseph James. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending your valuable time here with me. We have a jam-packed newsletter. Tonight is August 21st, 2014, a thirsty Thursday here in the fourth week of August. Boy, do I have an exciting newsletter in store for you today. Now today, boy, was a very uh, well. It was a it was a it was a nice breath of fresh air today. We get some great volatility, got some decent volume ahead of the Jackson Hole Symposium. Ah, well, ah, before we get started though, before we jump into our newsletter here this evening, you know the drill. We got three goals tonight. First, we're going to talk about what happened today. Second, we'll talk about what's in store for tomorrow. And third, I always save the best for last. You know me third thing we'll do tonight is we'll give you guys strategies whether the market goes up down sideways or wherever this market leads us on a summertime friday tomorrow morning before we jump into the charts here today i've got a special request here get over to sidewaysmarkets.com if you're watching this video on anything else besides our blog right now there'll be a link below the video on our youtube page so make sure you click that link Get over here to Sideways Markets for two specific reasons. Reason number one, I do not have time today to go over all the charts for today, so I've put all the charts plus the bonus charts available for download over at slideshare.net. So right below the video, you can download all the charts you see me using tonight as well as about a dozen or so bonus charts. That way you can see the entire picture now, print those out, save them on your desktop, whatever the case may be, but have them ready with me tomorrow morning when we open up our trade room at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll be using them as our roadmap. Next year, second thing, upper left-hand corner, I get a free pass for you guys and gals. Maybe you're wondering, how do we make profit with these levels that we talk about every night in the newsletter? Our newsletter clearly works very well, right? Unless, unless you're blind, you can easily see these levels work very well. I would love to show you in real time how we use these levels to make profit. I got a free pass for you, upper left-hand corner, to come out and join me in the trade room. Last but not least, right above my ugly mug, you'll see, of course, a spot for your name and your email address. If you would like to join our nightly newsletter email list, I'm going to send you an email as soon as my newsletter is is published every evening, right? So give me your name and your email address. And then remember, check your email because I'm going to send you a verification email to make sure that you get the email correctly. All righty, let's rock and roll here. Now you guys know the story today. Three things on the blog. Download the charts, grab your free pass, and register for our nightly newsletter. I'm ready to rock and roll. Helmets on, seatbelts fast, fastened, and let's get started. First of all, what happened today? What happened today? Of course, you can find these bullets below the video here today. What happened today? First of all, markets reacting positively to yesterday's FOMC meeting minutes. The exact words that were used in yesterday's FOMC was that the labor market had exceeded their expectations. They went on to say more about some of the slack they were finding in the labor market, but bottom line, though, yesterday's FOMC meeting minutes were very, very positive. We heard from Chinese manufacturing last night. I told you guys about this last night in the newsletter. Chinese manufacturing, boy, they're really hurting in Asia right now. They hit their three-month lows with a fifth straight monthly decline out of China. Now, remember, there's not much industry in China outside of manufacturing, right? There's not a lot there. So manufacturing is a big, big deal. And remember, when, the, when, when China catches a cold, the rest of the world here catches the flu right now. So Chinese manufacturing, that's one of the, big, that's one of the many reasons why you've got the U.S. equities going higher and you've got the U.S. crude oil going lower. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Jobless claims this morning, 8.30 a.m. this morning, we had jobless claims hit seven-year lows. That's right, seven-year lows. U.S. jobless claims today. Ain't nothing but clear skies there. Another very big report. And if you went back to last night's newsletter, what did I say last night in the newsletter? Be looking for the big move at 10 a.m. this morning, right? That was my exact word last night, and that's exactly what happened today. We saw all the markets moving very well between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock this morning, and it all has to do with these two news events. Housing index, or should I say the, the uh, existing home sales, 
continues to show strength. The big number, though, today, which I wasn't expecting. I was expecting most people to be looking at the housing number. These both came out this morning at 10 a.m. this morning. We saw the Philly Fed, four-year highs on that Philly Fed. So very strong news came out this morning in the U.S. that pushed gold down to fresh two-month lows. Crude oil did overnight hit the 92.50 area before bouncing off of that support. We'll take a look at crude in a moment. Russell pushed higher after it pulled back directly into our 45.5 buy zone. So boy, strong news out of the U.S., Weak news out of out of Asia, uh, relatively mixed news out of Europe overnight. Geopolitical, right? Remember, this time it's different. Sure, sure it is, right? Yeah, well, we now know this time it's not different, and we know the geopolitical events are definitely in the rearview mirror right now. In fact, last week or so, it's been like, what geopolitical events? Nothing. It's amazing how the news media completely sensationalizes all this violence. And then sure enough, whoops it daisy it's gone. Right? It's amazing how easy that is. And then big, big news here, guys. All the central bankers gathered in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Now, first of all, could you imagine going to local Denny's right, in Jackson? I mean, I can't imagine. Is there a Ritz-Carlton there? No, probably not. Right? Maybe there is. I'm sure, I'm sure there probably is, right? They wouldn't have all of these big wigs from all over the world going there. But just imagine walking in, right? And, you know, you're a local. You know, you, you don't know this stuff's happening right now. You're a local in Jackson Hole. You know, you own the coffee shop. You walk in and you got what? You got Jenny Yellen coming in to get a decaf, right? You got all of these central bankers hanging around Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I'm telling you this right now. Next year... We're doing a school of trade field trip, so so get everybody get the parents' permission form signed. We'll do we'll do a field trip to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, for next year's economic symposium. I just want to see what color boots she's wearing. You know she's wearing boots, right? You can't show up in slacks. That doesn't work in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Come on, I would love to see Draghi in a cowboy hat, right? <laughs> that would be awesome. Bottom line though is. Jackson Hole, Wyoming, the economic symposium is in full steam, and we got tomorrow all eyes and ears on our gal, Janet Yellen. So what a busy day today. Bearish news out of China, nothing but bulls in the U.S. right now, gold pushing lower, crude pushing lower, Russell finally grabbing that bid and heading higher, and again, all eyes and ears focused on tomorrow's uh, uh, Janet Yellen speech on a summertime Friday. Now you know what happened today. As you can see here, starting with the mighty mini Russell. Now remember, fundamentals right now on these equities in the U.S. Think about the fundamentals right now. Right now on the E-minis, I don't care what you're trading. The euro is going lower. That's pushing the dollar index higher. With the euro going lower, Long-term investors only have one game in town. You're not going to invest in Asia right now. You're not going to invest in Europe right now, at least until they get their acts together. And so we know that the U.S. equity markets are one of the only games in town right now if you're a long-term investor. That's, by default, going to keep these prices propped up. The next thing, of course, is this currency pressure. The euro getting its you-know-what put you-know-where is pushing lower. Caught a little bit of a bid today, but we can definitely blame it on some profit-taking. But the euro going lower by default is pushing that dollar higher. When we have, when we have a strong dollar, I can now buy more stuff. If I can buy more stuff, that means that stuff now is in heavy supply. When heavy supply occurs, what happens? Prices go down. So therefore, a strong dollar means that buying equities is cheaper in relationship to each other, right? If my dollar bill is worth more, now it's easier for me to buy a stock, right? It's easier for me to buy an equity, okay? So that's what's pushing these prices higher. That's the fundamentals that are going on right now. So now you know the fundamentals are definitely helping out the technicals here. I'll tell you right now, guys. The path to success is when you can blend together fundamentals with technicals. Now, I'm a pattern trader by, by trade, so to speak, right? So I trade patterns. I'm rule-based. But boy, is it ni- it's nice and helpful, though, to have some fundamentals helping us out too, isn't it? You don't need to know the fundamentals, but you can just trade patterns. But boy, I'll tell you right now, when you get them both lined up, 
whammo. You get some great rocket fuel here, right, for your trading career. So you can see we're still kind of ramming our head against here, bumping our heads against this 57.1. But the way it looks right now, though, after hearing from the Fed yesterday, after seeing more bullish news today, if we continue this way, we should be right back up to all-time highs here on these E-minis. I know the S&P was pretty much there. NASDAQ's pretty much there. The laggard here in the group is definitely the mini Russell right now. So we're waiting on the Russell to finish this move going higher here right now. Moving forward, though, we look here at the anchor chart on the Russell. Now, this was classic. This was classic today. And I bobbled this. I bobbled this in the trade room today. I was, I was, I was joking around with you guys in the room today, saying how much I bobbled this thing because I completely messed it up. But we definitely saw here, just like I said last night, we've got to pull back back into that 45.5. When did it happen? It happened right at 10 a.m. And that's exactly what I said last night. Be ready for the meat and potatoes. Be ready for the fireworks around that 10 a.m. news. So if you listen to my advice. You were ready for it here this morning. We came down. We tagged that 45.5. That's the same exact level I gave you guys last night on the newsletter. So you had all the ammunition you needed today. Here's the problem, though. What's my trend? Remember, three steps to trading success. What's my trend? Trend is up. How do I know? Green clouds above all the key moving averages. Where's my setup? Ah, see, that's the next concern now. Where's my setup? I have no buy set up right now until I get back to 45.5 again. So right now, if you're looking to buy this, Russell, sorry, but you're too late. You're too late to the party. I'm going to give you some other options here on the next chart here. But again, if you're looking for the easy money, if you're looking for the just give me the money now, that's behind you, right? So 1145.5. And again, 24 hours ago, I told you exactly what the level was. So no, no excuses there, right? No matter who you are. I'm looking at you, JJ. I'm looking at you right now, JJ. If you're my trader this morning, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Next thing here, we didn't close above this high, right? We didn't close sorry, above this high. So we had a nice little pullback here, right? It was beautiful. Beautiful pullback. In fact, it is zigzagged down into it. So it was just a purdy, purdy setup there this morning. But we couldn't make a new higher high here. Now, this leaves the door wide open right now for a possible sideways range going into a summertime Friday. All right? Remember, if you look up summertime Friday in the dictionary, it has a, it has a big danger sign, right? One of those skull and crossbones sign, right? You know what I'm talking about? Right, those poison signs, right? So summertime Friday, it could be a very slow day tomorrow, and we know this is leaving the door wide open right now for a range-bound market. I'm still going to be weighted to the buy side right now in the Russell, and if we do keep going higher here, I'm going to look for price to get above this 63.1. If I can get above 63.1, then we're green light now looking for another setup to go long. So scenario one, is that we go sideways tomorrow, right? That's the first scenario. Buy the lows, sell the highs with a weighted to the buy side, right? I prefer to buy that 45.5 again. The only time, though, I'm going to be back to being a bull again. I'm still a bull long term, but short term, not so much. Short term, I'm sideways right now. Long term, though, just give me a higher high. Once I get a higher high here, then I can now begin looking for more buying opportunities. If we get a higher high, I'm going to have to update these charts for you. So come out and see me tomorrow morning in the trade room, and we'll update all the levels again with that new higher high. All right? As we go here, though, if you're in this trade right now from 45.5, you've got targets at 63.1, 75.4, and 78.5. All right? If you're already in the move, hold on to it. If you're not in the move, you're too late. The next thing is going to be that new higher high here on the Russell. Keep on going here from my 32 to my 16. Now we can start to see what the game plan is. Okay, the 16 anchor chart giving you a much better look here at it. I've got a high here of 1160.9, a low of 45.5. I think it went as low as 43.5 or something like that, right? Where'd it go here? Yeah, 43.7. So, you know, give or take a few ticks, though. But I have another buy zone down here, 47.2, 45.6. I've got this trend line here as well. That's the low of the big long-term channel. What's my trend? 
Again, three steps to success. What's my trend? Trend is bullish, right? You can definitely tell. Green clouds were above the key moving averages. But where's my setup? That's the concern. The next buy setup is down at 45.6, right? 47.2, this area right here. Okay, like I said, if you miss the 45.5, you missed it, right? No big deal. Trades are like buses. There'll be one coming around the corner. But again, be careful right now trying to buy right now, all right? Because unless we see a low volume rally here, and again, I'm looking to buy, but I'm going to wait until I get above that 63.1, all right? So a couple scenarios here. Be on the lookout for a sideways range tomorrow. Buy lows, sell highs with a preference to the buy side. If we go above 63.1, now I readjust. If we go higher, then we look for the pullback so we can buy it again. All right? If you're in my trade room tomorrow morning, I'll give you guys updated levels and real-time entries on the Russell. All right? Be careful tomorrow. If it's going to be slow like if, it, if it's as slow as I think it might be tomorrow, and we'll talk more about that summer Friday when we talk about news here. If it's slow tomorrow, we got to be careful. All right? Summertime Friday. Let's keep going. From the Russell down here to that funny yellow metal, the gold, and finally, Houston, we have a pulse. We've got the gold pushing lower here once again. Looking at gold right now. Think about the fundamentals here on that funny yellow metal. Less violence in the Middle East. A weak euro, a strong dollar are pushing gold futures lower. Okay? Think about this right now. We broke below the 1281. That was a real important level we talked about in last night's newsletter. We, put, we pushed through that 81 like a hot knife through butter. It was easy. Next level down below, 1265.8. You can easily see that here on the chart. By the way, we're now finally getting out of this middle, right? The middle is just asking for trouble on this wedge you can see in this daily chart, right? So remember, fundamentally speaking right now, gold is in trouble if you're a buyer. If you're a seller of gold, right, get ready for the party. 1265.8 is my next leg down. Keep on moving here from gold down to my anchor chart here on gold. Boy, if you used our letters, if you if you used our levels from last night's newsletter, we literally hit all of our targets on gold going lower here. So I've had a very successful string here of trades on gold over the past few weeks. And remember, don't take my word for it, guys. Go back and watch last night's newsletter. All right, I don't need to toot my own horn. My results speak for themselves. On gold right now, what's my trend? Where's my setup? Where's my entry pattern? What's my trend? Trend is down. How do I know? Red clouds below the moving averages. Where's my setup? My next setup right now is going to be symmetry, trigger zone, reversal line, channel. Right? So we got the channel high. We've got the symmetry resistance. We've got trigger zone. I've got reversal line, right? If you're a member of mine, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, if you're a member of mine, then you speak trader knees, right? You speak the same language I do right now. So we get a downtrend right now in the gold. I need a setup here to get short right now. And you can clearly see the targets we have below us waiting for us right now. I've got 1265, I've got 1256, 1242 and 1237 7. That's my 32 anchor. Maybe you don't want to wait until 1292 to get short. Let's give you some more accurate levels here. Once again, gold here. What's my trend? Trend is down. How do I know? Red clouds below the key moving averages. Where's my setup? We just tested a setup area, right? Trigger zone setup. I got the 78.8, 80 even, 81 even, 81.8, 85.3. 89.4, and don't forget, that's the high of that long-term channel right there. So if we get up here, right, that'll be another chance to sell. I doubt we get that high tomorrow, summertime Friday, but as you can see here, I am given a green light right now. I can get selling short right now. What's my trend? Down. Where's my setup? 1280.0. Where's my entry trigger? you got to be a student of mine to know that. Come out and join me tomorrow in the trade room. 
I'll walk you through the perfect entries. Come out and join me as a student. You'll learn all in the course materials. We teach everybody all the entry patterns, all the entry triggers here to all of our students here at School of Trade, right? So don't be bashful. Come out and see me tomorrow morning in the trade room. You'll be thankful you did. Moving from that funny yellow metal here now to the black gold. Last but not least here on crude oil futures. Now, we went all the way down to our target from last night's newsletter. Go back and watch last night's newsletter before we caught a bounce off that 92.45 area. Think about the fundamentals right now that are affecting crude oil. What's affecting crude right now? Pretty much the same stuff affecting gold. We got less violence in the Middle East, right? The poor news out of Asia is is obviously, well, sorry, poor news out of Asia and Euro, right, are pushing the currencies lower, making for a stronger dollar, right? We saw a record high on the, I believe it was the yen pair today. So we know that we've got weak Euro, right? We've got all the weak Asian currencies right now that are pushing that dollar higher. By having a stronger dollar, the price of crude oil is less as comparison. So combine the violence in the Middle East along with the currency pressures. Also, don't forget, this time next week, we'll be talking about the end of summertime driving season. So again, if these sellers if these sellers have their way, we could be as low as 90 here by this time next week, if not faster. All right, so we definitely are seeing this price drop because of the pressures we've talked about already. As you can see, very interesting. We were able to hold today above that 92.98 so apparently we're not quite out of the woods yet seeing it yesterday drop like that i thought 92.15 was definitely gonna be in the in, in the uh, cards here we went as low as 92.45 today but as you can see though definitely in a downward trend here on the crude now today was a great example on crude i'm sure a lot of folks thought ah this is that rally we we're talking about no this is not the rally you're thinking. This is simply profit taking at the lows, putting us into an area now to sell. Here's my 32 anchor. Same thing applies. I always do the same thing. It's three steps to success. What's my trend? Trend is down. How do I know? Below the long-term moving average. Now, this is a clue right here. We went right back to green here very, very recently, short-term. Right now, I'm still bearish long-term. I'm going to talk more about how short-term, though, we're starting to look a little bit neutral here right now in, long, in, the, in the short term. You'll see that in a second. My trend is down. Where's my setup? Right? Trend tells me direction to be trading in. Setup tells me when to be looking to participate in that trend. We go over this every day in real time in my trade room. Come out and see me tomorrow for more information. Again, where's my setup? We're right there. Right? We're in the setup right now. Trigger zone setup, channel high setup, symmetry setup. I've got 94.30, 93.96, 94.60. You can see me pretty much went right to symmetry, right at the top of that channel. So guys, green light right now, hit the sell button. All we need now is, we've got my trend. I've got my setup. Now all I need now is that entry trigger. That's all I need. So entry trigger to the short side right now, that's all you guys and gals need here to pull the plug here on crude. I would say profit target at the low, profit target here at 92.11, 91.51, 91.21, and there's your 90.66, right, for an adjusted profit target as we go lower. Again, keep an eye on that right now because you are, again, green light here for that short on the crude right now. You want more details? You got it. Now, this is why I said long-term bearish, short-term or neutral right now, okay? Short-term neutral. This is a classic case here, and I want you to look back in time here real quick. Last week, I want you to remember what happened last week, all right? Look what happened last week. We pushed higher. What happened? We get above it just before it turns, right? And then whammo, right back down. Does that look familiar? Just a little bit, doesn't it? Yep, just a little bit familiar. Remember, human beings are creatures of habit. Human beings trade the markets. Human beings built the buildings that house the exchange. Human beings developed the computers that execute black box, algorithmic, high... Human beings are responsible for everything, okay? Until human beings are not responsible, 
the markets will continue to do what? Repeat themselves over and over and over again. Human beings are creatures of habit. We expect the same things to happen again. This looks like a possible carbon copy of what we saw this time last week. All right? Obviously, can't guarantee anything right now because this world of ours is cuckoo, right? A lot of crazy stuff going out there right now. But we definitely have every reason right now, again, green light here, to look for our shorts right now on the crude. All right? Try to find your pants while you're looking for the shorts. That was a bad trading joke. I got targets here, 92.92, 92.72, 92 even-ish because we're going to go down to the low of that channel, right? Right now, it looks like right about 92. Might be lower this time tomorrow. 91.53, 90.74. These are all of our easy targets now below us on the crude. All right, guys? So, Wrapping up here on crude, short term, a little bit neutral right now, but we're still looking good for the shorts on crude right now. Gold is nothing but shorts. Russell, nothing but, well, Russell's a similar scenario to crude, right? We got the crude here in a short term neutral. Russell also a bit of a short term neutral right now as it goes sideways, which we talked about earlier already. All right? Now, you guys have strategies ready for tomorrow. What's my news for tomorrow? Ooh, man, get the kids out of the room, batten down the hatches. We get a summer Friday tomorrow, boys and girls. A summer Friday right around the corner. Now, summer Fridays are one of those days where we don't know what the heck's going to happen. It could be a great session. It could be a real quiet session. I'll tell you, there were times this week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday this week, where it was, it was as slow as it could have ever been. So that means tomorrow could be just like that slowest period on Wednesday morning we saw. It could also be very, very fast. Fridays have a weird way of getting people to do crazy things. We call it the Hail Mary traders. We call it the, oh boy, my boss is going to fire me trade. We call it the, if I don't get out of this position, my, my client's going to track me down and shoot me trades. Right. So at the end of the day on Friday, people do crazy things. 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time is when the European markets close. We might get some crazy Europeans doing some stupid things on Friday morning. We don't know. What we do know, though, is, is that there will likely be the, the, uh, uh, the scent of some exhaust from the boat. There will most likely be some barbecue grills being fired up. We're one week away from Labor Day weekend, which means the parents, the kids, traders, Everyone is going to be trying to squeeze in the last few days of their summertime, and tomorrow is a summer Friday. So right off the bat, be careful, right? Be careful. Tomorrow is not the day to go to a live account for the first time in your career. Tomorrow is not the day to go testing out a new strategy. Tomorrow is not the day to be increasing your position size. Tomorrow is not the day to be doing anything other than what you've already done over and over and over again. Now, talking about the news no major news on the calendar for tonight. Nothing coming out of China, nothing out of Europe tomorrow morning. We go right into the U.S. session tomorrow morning, 8.30 a.m. I've got CPI and retail sales from our good friends to the north up in Canada. Remember, CAD news, anything from the CAD, anything from the Swissy, I'm sorry, from the Kiwi, from the Aussie. Uh, let's see here. Anything related to natural resources, right? So energy markets, big, big, big movers during news that comes out of Canada. I honestly don't think anybody will even be listening to that tomorrow morning. Everyone, all eyes and ears, all hands on deck will be listening to Janet Yellen. Janet Yellen tomorrow, my gal, right? My girl, I love this lady. Right? I, I really do. I find her to be a very good representative of, of our, uh, of our uh, central bank. Uh, she has a great job, I think, of explaining things. She seems to be a, uh, uh, a chairperson of the people, if you will. Right? Very different than Helicopter Ben. And don't even get me started on Mr. Greenspan. Okay? So we know that. So anyways, my, my opinions aside, Janet Yellen is pretty much the leader of the free world right now. No offense to Mr. O'Drama. But of course, Janet Yellen's the one, the puppet master right now, controlling all the strings. So everyone will be listening in to see what she says tomorrow morning. Now, I can tell you exactly what she's going to say tomorrow. Ready? I can. I can tell you exactly what she's going to say tomorrow. 
I put a link below the video tonight, which will take you to yesterday's FOMC meeting minutes commentary. I took the FOMC meeting minutes, I drafted up the commentary, there's a link below tonight's video. That will take you to a very detailed overview of yesterday's FOMC meeting minutes. If you want to know what Janet Yellen is going to say tomorrow morning, all you have to do is, is click the link below the video, read that summary, and I can almost guarantee you tomorrow morning it's going to be almost verbatim. It'll almost be word for word what was in those meeting minutes from yesterday. All right? So I don't think she's going to catch anybody off guard. But you know what happens. Once those, once those Q&A session begins... She's going to say her speech, and then after, you know, 10.30, 10.45, that's when all those smart Alec reporters, they try to trick her, right? They're going to try to get her to put her foot in her mouth. That's when the big moves are going to happen. So look for those moves after 10 o'clock tomorrow, 10.30, 45, 11 o'clock. But be careful. Do not force it. Just because I'm saying look for moves at 11 o'clock tomorrow does not mean you should be trading 11 o'clock if there's no trading to be traded personality is going to be key tomorrow. If it's dead asleep, you're not going to force it. But if you're getting some higher highs, some lower lows, you got some good volume in the market at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, they're reacting to Janet Yellen, and now you've got the green light to be participating. As always, guys, as always, be careful on a summertime Friday. After 11 o'clock tomorrow, you got to have a really good reason to be trading right now. As I said earlier, tomorrow is not the time to go trying new ideas on a new account increasing position size. Tomorrow is not the day to do it. All right, wait for next week. As always, I provide all my students with real-time updates. I'll be watching this in real time, explaining exactly what's going on tomorrow morning, and I will walk you through as we see this news develop after 10 a.m. I want to thank you all so much for being a part of our newsletter today. We've had a fantastic week. Don't forget to register for our nightly newsletter. Join the free pass. Download today's charts, and again, below the video tonight, you're going to see the notes from the FOMC meeting minutes. That will tell you exactly what to expect for tomorrow. Don't forget, guys, to share this information with a friend. We get a free trial over here at schooltrade.com. I've got someone standing by here 24 hours a day to give you guys any help you may need. We have three levels of membership, and I am just so excited to be wrapping up another successful week of trading here at School Trade. Thank you so much for being here. What a great week we had. If I don't see you tomorrow in our trade room, have a great summer weekend. There's only two left, guys. There's only two summer weekends left. You better start working on that sunburn now, right? I'm, I'm kidding with you. Wear the SPF. Don't forget the sunblock, guys. Those sun's rays, they'll kill you these days. Be careful out there. Have a great weekend. And don't forget, this weekend, take some time out of your day to spend it with the family and friends you love the most. We only get a few a few years in this planet. So take the time out of your busy schedules and spend that valuable time with your loved ones, right? They probably miss you. Call grandma. She misses you. She'd love to hear from you. My name is Joseph James. Thank you so much for being a part of the newsletter. Broadcasting here from our headquarters in Los Angeles, California. Have a great weekend. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.